Dubai is an absolutely wonderful place to visit. There is tremendous, tremendous growth in this part of the world, um, especially for Dubai 2020. Uh, massive infrastructure is being built in this part of the world. And in the broader Middle East and Africa region, there is a lot of uh, renovation happening in the networks, whether it's LTE, higher bandwidth, over-the-top video, Facebook, social uh, media making progress into vast uh, parts of Africa. So it's an exciting business for us to, to be part of this world. I'm an engineer. I lived in the Valley for 30 years, uh, built products, enjoy the concept of building products, something that hasn't been done before. That's what the Valley is for. And. Uh, joined uh, Alcatel through a startup that got acquired by Alcatel which now became Nokia. I run the IP business for Nokia, um, roughly a $3 billion business. Um, that's my role in, in Nokia. So we see a lot of exciting things happening. If you, if you look at the broader network, there is incredible value riding on top of the IP networks. Uh, you look at uh, industries being transformed, whether it is uh, sharing economies like Uber, Airbnb, you know, and uh, entertainment, social media, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all of these are riding on an IP infrastructure. Um, entire countries' economies are running on IP infrastructure. So the demands that are being put on this infrastructure and the creativity that needs to go in to continue to scale these networks with a lot of important aspects related to security uh, is, is uh, huge. So that's where we play and we come in. And then there is another part which is also happening which is significant is the way an enterprise manages and operates its business is dramatically changing. Um, there's this concept of cloud where all enterprise applications are moving to a cloud, whether it's Amazon Web Services or uh, Azure from Microsoft um, or set of hybrid clouds. Some of the core uh, pieces are within the enterprise, but vast majority of growth on, on some of these applications are happening in the cloud. So it's a hybrid cloud. That poses questions about uh, scale, uh, ease of operation, and security uh, when it comes to IP networks. So uh, FP4, we are excited about FP4. We launched it last year. Uh, the market reception has been incredible. We are the first, um, there, there are two parts to FP4. One is we want to be the leading edge in terms of technology uh, and silicon technology that is available to, uh, in this particular case, we were the first networking industry, uh, first in the networking industry to get to 16 nanometer. What that does is gives us a platform where we can put a lot of technology at a low cost point. So we can increase the capacity, all 5G, 4G, all the applications that I talked about require massive bandwidth, right? So we are uh, using our skills to get the latest uh, that is available in silicon. We built our own memory chip that is suitable for the networking industry. And what that does is, and we put a bunch of security aspects within the silicon that will help us um, as you get into IoT and some of the security threats that, uh, that we observe on the networks. So one of the things that is really important in security is the, the aspect of where you can do perimeter security is not true anymore. You know, the old traditional model is if I put a fence around my house, then everything inside the house is protected. With IoT, you know, even in my own house, I counted the number of devices in my house. There were over 30 devices. And I know within a couple of years, it'll approach 60, 70 devices. Most of those devices are potential security threats. 
You've got a thermostat, a garage door opener, a front door camera. All of those are built by people that don't understand security, right? And they're fly-by-night operators or devices that get in. And those for service providers are potential threats within their networks. So if you just protect your perimeter, firewalls, that won't be enough. So we need to build technology within to protect the critical resources that are inside the service providers network. So the technology that we have developed in FP4 allows people to isolate and segment the traffic that is potentially compromised. You'll see more of this. Uh, we've seen a steady increase of uh, security threats, including baby monitors that have brought down a fair amount of infrastructure on the East Coast in the US. Um, so you would see uh, examples like that that will continue to grow over the next few years. Okay. So 5G is about more data, but more importantly it's about what uh, the industry calls as network slicing, which is about very unique applications that were not possible before that are going to be available on the network infrastructure whether it is automated cars that have a car to infrastructure communication that needs to happen that forces a certain latency requirements on the network to a gaming application that has a very strict guidelines in terms of how much bandwidth and how much latency you can get to massive amount of sensors uh, parking meters, uh, sensors, all kinds of sensors that are going to come up in the, in the future that will put a certain uh, load on the network, certain network requirements on the network, certain uh, restrictions on the network that has to be thought through as you design and develop. And that's what Nokia with its entire breadth, one of the few companies in the world that has uh, all the way from RAN to the core and everything in between gives a, a picture of an end-to-end -end story that is really required as, as customers look to upgrade their networks. I think we want to uh, first uh, be the partner to our customers where uh, we are looking to lower the cost per bit in uh, all aspects of their business and we see a fair amount of innovation happening on the OSS, BSS side to simplify their OPEX. Automation is a big part of it. Um, to another part where we are spending a lot of time is new revenue opportunities. How do they be a better part of the entire value chain that is being created by the network and provide them new use cases where they can get additional revenue? So we have a unique perspective because we, we have, as I said before, we have the entire network view and, and our engagement with over-the-top customers uh, and we are engaged with a fair number of web scale companies as we call it, whether you take the, the big ones, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, we are all engaged in all of these customers. That gives us a picture of what the medium is and how to transport that uh, data and the applications to the end users. I think um, the big part is the infrastructure cost associated in putting that uh, uh, the technology in okay. for service providers. And this is where I go back to the first comment I made about uh, there is a lot of value in the network. And the question then is, how does that value get translated to investment? Who does that investment? Some of the investment will come in service providers, but we also see a fair amount of investment being put by the content providers. Some of the largest networks in the world are being built by web scale companies. Yeah. Right? So where the handoff happens in terms of that YouTube traffic, uh, before it sees eyeballs will evolve over the next few years. Okay.